So you say you don't got no game, bro, which we, we know that's BS because you got Tasha, right? So before even going on the show, did you have any any concerns, any quarrels, any anything holding you back in regards to you know now being sober and you will be the sober guy on the show, but probably having to tell your story on national TV, uh, knowing how big The Bachelor is? Like, can you walk us through that right quick? Yeah, I think I think as it pertains to alcohol, right? Like, I want to be liked. I want to find that commonality like with my fellow and going on a show like this with the, the common denominator is oftentimes let's have a drink, you know, let's have a cocktail. And so, you know, I think I'd be lying if I told you that I didn't think about how am I going to like connect with you, especially on that first night, you know, yeah. like it's, it's, it's a lubricant. We know that. And uh, there was definitely some moments there where my head was kind of like rotating, like what, how did I get here? You know? And, uh, like a lot of things I kind of just had to get through the pain and work through the fear and, and get to a place of like reminding myself that, you know, like I'm worth it and I'm good enough and, and all that stuff. Um, you know, and, and then like, other than that, just like when you start to sit down and talk to these women, obviously like Claire was there initially and then Tasha, you know, dropped into the scene, like, uh, you know, just, just hoping that they have an open mind, which, you know, my experience was that they both did. You, you said something right there. Uh, you said you were, you kind of alluded to the fact that you would talk to yourself a little bit. Uh, is there anything in particular, and I'm asking this for a specific reason because there's something that I have. Is there anything in particular that you say to yourself when you, you know, get those butterflies and, and, and want to be liked, but do something that they don't do? Or is there like affirmation that you give yourself? Is there anything in particular? I mean, I, you're asking for my secret weapon here. I, I like, you know, <laughs> what I like, what I do in those situations is I will, I will find a restroom when I don't need to use a restroom and I will, you know, take a moment to gather myself and um, maybe do like a, a minute or two of meditation and kind of just like come back to like, no matter what you're taking care of here, like think about where you are, like you're going to be taken care of, you know? Yes. yes. Hey, that, that secret weapon is huge, man. I love that. Uh, go to the bathroom to yourself. I love that. Truly do. I'm, so many people can resonate with that, and I'm sure so many people are going to start doing that uh, thanks to you. Uh, what I tell myself is, uh, I, I, I've said it before and I said it again, <laughs> I I'm Mike motherfucking say. Johnson. I'm Mike motherfucking Johnson. I say that under my breath a few times, and it just it gives me that umph I need to you know to keep moving forward. That's my little secret weapon. So I, I love knowing yours, but I had to give you mine as well. So uh, you won't feel left out. But I think Brian's left out, right? What is his? Uh honestly, man, I just I just basically say some affirmations, gratitude, like everything I'm I'm thankful for. I mean, I don't know, man. Like I feel like. Zach, I feel like we're, we have kind of similar personalities going on the show. I think you had like a, a quiet confidence about yourself. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, do you feel like everything that you went through in rehab, like actually gave you a, a, a leg up going into that situation? Because you had been through so much, like what's, you know, what, okay, we're going on TV. Yes, there is nerves with that. But as far as the challenges, I mean, you've been through stuff so much deeper. In a sense. Good question. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it just wasn't that dramatic, you know. Like, I, I, I think, yeah. For me, thank you. Like for me, it's like okay. One, the bubble, like the bubble alone, it was like being in rehab. I mean, it just, it just was, right? Like, talk about your feelings in front of this camera you know, be amongst some other, a bunch of other dudes. Like, like you were in your comfort zone. Yeah. 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 And, I and, and I will say like, I always say for Zach Clark, like every morning when I open my eyes, I have a competitive advantage against the rest of the world. Cause I mm -hmm. like, I'm just clear headed. I'm clear minded. You know, I've been through some shit. I have some life experience. I've seen some things play out. Um, and so going on the show was just another one of those experiences where like, I know at the end of the day, I'm not in control here. I'm not, there's something else out there that's in control and I'm going to stay out of that. And, and so yeah. like, 
I'm going to show up and I'm going to give it my best. I'm going to treat people with respect. I'm going to see where this thing goes. Absolutely. Good dude here. Taisha got to go. So Zach, obviously you've had a, a long journey uh, with rehab, with alcoholism and addiction. Can you just take me uh, into the transition from when you were an actual patient in rehab to now basically being an addiction specialist and helping so many people out there overcome similar things to what you went through? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. I, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I ended up in New York city and I, I knew zero people, right? Like I knew no one. So I started running around the city, just trying to get connected. Um, and I knew like deep down inside, I loved, I loved like business for the connection, like the connectivity amongst people. And I love figuring out like solving problems and building teams and all that stuff. Right. Like yeah. I knew that about myself. And, and even when I was getting loaded, that was a big part of my life. And now I had like this newfound love of like helping people and recovery. And so about a month or two into being in the city, I, I linked up with this guy, Justin, who now is my co-founder at Release Recovery, which is the, the organization we started about four and a half years ago. And, uh, you know, I like, I put one foot in front of the other and I really, I bet on myself. I mean, I had a full-time job. I was working at the time coming out of treatment and I started to slowly do some of this recovery work to the point where like I was eventually able to let that other job go and like jump in with two feet. And, you know, I, I made a lot of mistakes, you know, I'm definitely not perfect. Like I, 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 I made some bad decisions as like, you know, everyone who's starting a new career does, but I can, I can definitely say now, like looking back on it, I'm grateful for those moments because I just really, at the end of the day, like experience is my greatest teacher, you know, like that's, 100%. You know, definitely so. so. And tell me, bro, what is like, I want to know, because I mean, obviously you just did, uh, you know, your marathon. I mean, it was a huge success. What would you raise like 80,000? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. that's amazing. Nice. Congratulations. So what like, I want to know what the vision for release recovery is like what like take me like five, 10 years down the line. Like, what do you envision? Like, what's your what's your dream goal for this charity? that everyone gets a shot at this life that I've been given. I mean, that's, and like, you know, part of what really, like, there's a couple of things I know. One, at the end of the day, like my dream is to have community inclusion, a place for anyone who's struggling to go to show up because this past weekend, we did this challenge over 48 hours and we based it at this hotel in New York city. And it wasn't just people that were in recovery showing up, you know, it was people from the running community. It was people that saw it on Instagram. It was bachelor nation. It was like the common thread throughout was, yeah, I got sober. And like, you know, we kind of like built this thing, but there was people from all walks of life showing up. And that to me is all I can ask for in terms of just like community. And then, you know, from like the, the fundraising or the philanthropic, you know, angle, um, you know, I, I was fortunate, you know, my parents were able to spend a good amount of money for me to get help. But, um, there's a lot of people out there that, that don't end up getting treatment, you know, for whatever reason and insurance, insurance companies like aren't the best with it. So if we could raise enough money to, you know, save a bunch of lives, that'd be great because, in recovery, it's like the greatest Ponzi scheme of all time, right? Or pyramid scheme, like one person recovers. And as a result of that one person getting well, like all these other people's lives improve. So I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big dreamer. We'll see where this thing goes, but I'm, I'm pretty confident. It's going to the top. You have a very, absolutely a, a very humble and positive dream. And I think that you're absolutely doing your dream right now. I think you're living your dream, quite honestly, and we'll continue to do so. Uh, something something I kept thinking about when you were talking is that uh, there's two people in this world, uh, those that are humble and those that will be humbled. And so uh, you are a definitely humble man and someone that's going to do so much good. Let me tell you something. I had to be humbled, though. This dude, got, <laughs> this, this dude had to get punched in the face a couple of times. You know, I also believe there's two types of people in the world, those that have been punched in the face and those that have not. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> facts, 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 facts. I think... For me, if I want to like get on, if I want to get real about it, like when I think about 
my life and my journey, so much can be learned. Like, so, so, and I alluded to it at the beginning, like I'm a, I'm a dude that had a privileged upbringing. Uh, I'm well aware of that. You know, I went to a good high school. My parents could pay for me to go to college, you know, and none of that was able to prevent me from like going to the places where, where I went, you know, and, and like addiction, alcoholism, mental illness, whatever you want, like it doesn't discriminate. And on the flip side of that, my experience has been that like the whole world, at least the United States for, for that matter, like could, could learn from the, the recovery community because, you know, we, we are a resilient, passionate, understanding, loving group, and there's no boundaries. I mean, there's no boundaries. Like when I, when I started, like I'll, I'll never forget, I was out early, early, early in my days landed in New York City. And, you know, I sat down at a diner with, you know, a 58 year old gay man, you know, a trans like trans woman like like I, I mean like like the, the eight people at this table and I looked around and I felt so loved right like in that moment and you know because this thing like this addiction at whatever it is had affected us all and we all knew that so we shared that common bond and it just disarmed everyone from like being in that judgment zone um and if that never happened to me I probably would have lived an existence that looked like Zach goes to college, Zach gets the job, the nine to five, Zach marries girl, Zach has three kids and Zach rides off into like the suburban sunset. And there wouldn't have been anything wrong with that. And there is nothing wrong with that. I don't want you to take that the wrong way, but like, fuck, like I've been given this gift of just like this 360 view of the world that, you know, it took me, you know, lying on a cardboard box in Camden, New Jersey, you know, with a needle in my arm and a crack pipe in my mouth to really be humbled, as Mike said earlier, enough to like be willing to accept the help. And once I was able to do that, you know, I've never, I've never looked back. And that's like, that's the greatest gift. So when people ask and they always do, how does it feel to date? How, how about the drink and how about this? I'm like, you have no idea. You know, like you have no idea, like, you know. It is definitely, but one foot in front of the other. Um, Zach, so, I mean, we may be going back, but like, I want, I want, can you take us back to somebody that you helped along the way? I mean, obviously you just mentioned a couple of people that are already inspired by your story, but somebody when you became an addiction specialist that you helped that made you realize, you know what, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. Nice. Like that one story that just impacted you more than any other. I love that question. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this kid, Keith, who I love and I'm still very close with today. And so Keith was the brother of, I was dating a girl and mm-hmm. Keith was the brother of my girlfriend's brother's girlfriend, whatever. You get the point. He was loosely connected to me and I had heard that he was um, struggling and I talked to him a couple times on the phone and I talked to his parents. I said, all right, we got to plan an intervention. I'm going to come out to Jersey. We're going to kind of do the deal. And uh, I walked into the home and it was a shit show. You know, Um, mom's crying. Keith's upstairs puking. I mean, like just chaotic, right? In this suburban New Jersey town. And I eventually kind of grab Keith and I say, you're coming with me. And we get him in the car and I drive him out to treatment. And this kid was a total pain in my ass for, for like a good year, you know, just the phone calls. And like, I'm like, I'm done with this guy. I'm done with this guy. I can't do anything more for him. And then like it one day it just clicked. And I saw him like, you know, start to like change. I saw him really like from, from, from like the deepest, darkest, like depths of hell on that, that day when I walked into his house to, to a man, 
you know, that like understood, like was like had a new understanding of what life was all about. And I ended up going to that guy's wedding. I ended up watching him have a kid. Um, you know, he, he now is helping, you know, other men get sober and he's just one of those guys that I look at and I'm like, there, this guy had zero chance. Like, it, like he had zero and now here he is. And, and like the thing about, you know, the recovery process is it doesn't take 10 years. You know, this kid like put all that stuff together in like two, three years, it's really like a superpower. Yeah. So I look to him as one of those guys that really like, just, I'll never forget it. And then yep. there's the guys like the amount of funerals I've been to guys. I mean, it's staggering, you know, it's. Talk about, I want to know about that. So did you go to funerals while you were addicted? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> not to the, to the level that I do now. I mean, we just, we lose too many people, well, you know, like. When you were addicted and you went to funerals, did it ever touch you? Or you were like, your, what nah. was your like, what was your perspective? You were numb. Just, yeah. I don't, I mean, the thing is like when I'm active, there's nothing, nothing else that's that matters. Gonna touch me. There's yeah, nothing that's going to touch me. I mean, like I always kind of say no, no amount of love was going to get me sober because at the end of the day, I came from a good family that is still a good family. You know, I had a beautiful wife. I had an amazing friend group had college teammates that I played baseball with. I mean, I have more, I, I mean, more people in my life than I care to admit. And not one of those people had like the special sauce to, you know, convince me that it was time to get help. I oh, had to, yeah. I you had know to what? get. You know what, man? I think that like, it's, I, the stories you've been telling about uh, your buddy there that you helped out, Keith. like you basically put your hand on him when he was puking at his house and you basically told him, hey, we're going home just like your dad did to you. And I think that's an amazing story. It's like, sometimes it just, it's, it, all the love is great, but it sometimes takes somebody like you to grab them by the, by the arm and say, Hey, you're coming with me and I'm going to get you better. Or, you know, like I just you, think that's like you said, your ex-wife saying, I love you, but I'm done. You know, right. those, those tough love moments as well. But I think also, like you said, when you're in that, you can, you can give two shits about tough love from some people. Yeah. Well, that's the confusing thing about this, right? That's, and I don't know if you guys have had any personal dealings with people that are in, you know, in the throes of this thing. It's like, it's so frustrating. It's so it frustrating yeah. because like, like I want to open someone's mouth and like shove recovery down it because I know <laughs> what it's done for me. But like yeah. at the end of the day, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Yeah. You know, that just doesn't, it, 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 it does not work. Um, I, I got, Ooh, I got a question I might get in trouble for. Uh, so there's these, there's, I forget the name of it. You probably know more than I do because this is what you do for a living. What are your thoughts on the, uh, I don't want to say it like that. What I'm, what I'm going to ask is about the drugs that, uh, block off your, uh, receptors of dopamine mm -hmm. receptors. Now, yeah, now now Trexone and Vivitrol and, and some of these opiate blockers, right? Yeah, opiate, yeah. there you go. Thank you. So, yeah. Zach, can you talk real quick about opiate blockers and what that is? I mean, I think the medical world is unbelievable, right? And they've developed medications that prevent people from getting high. Uh, the thing you got to watch out for is eventually there's two things that can happen. The person can wake up any morning and decide not to take that medication and go get high. And at that point, they're more susceptible to an overdose because they haven't used drugs in however amount of time. Um, and I get really nervous when people try to use medication as their, you know, singular way to recover. Because for me, um, you know, medication did play a part in my early recovery. I did use blockers initially when I got out of treatment but I had to be tapped into a community and I had to understand that life was worth living um, because without that, I would have just been back to doing what I was doing. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Isaac, thank you so much. We appreciate your vulnerability. Appreciate you, we appreciate your knowledge, your education that you've shared upon us, the wisdom that you've given, the, uh, the, the jokes. He's quite honestly just, you're a humble individual who wants to help out. Uh, what would you say, last question, man, like, 
to those individuals that are out there that are struggling that, you know, quite honestly don't give a fuck about nothing else going on right now and or uh, someone that has an individual in their life that they want to talk to, like, what are your last words that someone may be listening to? Yeah, I have a couple of things. One is, you know, if, if you or someone you know is struggling, don't give up. You know, where there's breath, there's hope. And I really believe that. So much of this is just staying in the ring with these people and, and holding on until they, uh, until they, you know, find a place within themselves to, to get the help that they need. Obviously, I'm a huge proponent of engaging a professional, you know, to, to guide you in the process. And that removes the emotion, you know, the emotion from the conversation. And lastly, like, you know, I've said this on many podcasts and I've said this on many, like, don't be shy. Shoot me a note, DM me, DM release recoveries, Instagram. Like we, we get back to people. Like I'm a human being, you know, like that's, I'm not some, like, I'm not on some pedestal here. So if you're struggling and like you, you don't know where else to go, I can't tell you how many people we've helped as a result of just that. Hey, a DM that I wake up to and it's like, all right, call me, Text, you know, like whatever. So um, there's, there's help available. That's the most important thing to know. There's help available. Uh, shout out, shout out your handles right quick. Shout out uh, so where people can find you. We got a, we got a, I think a ZW Clark is Instagram. We got a release recovery um, is like the recovery services and the release recovery foundation is the nonprofit. Uh, you can find us anywhere there. I mean, we definitely appreciate Thank you. Got to have you back, man. Keep doing your thing, man. You're doing amazing things and helping out so many people. And uh, thank you for that. What I absolutely adore about what Zach said was, I don't know if you caught it, man. He said he was talking about being in the table. He said there was an older gay guy. And he said there was a, a, a trans individual there. And he, and, he, and he said something that I want people to resonate with. All that crap that we, you know, we have our differences within people, that goes by the voice out because at the end of the day, we all just want love, man. And that's yeah. what he was kind of alluding to is that yeah, like, he felt so much love in that room in that moment. Yeah, no, addiction doesn't discriminate. You know yeah. what I mean? There were so many people from different walks of life that, you know, were at that table. And, you know, a lot of people need help out there. Like we talked about, the opiate, opiate epidemic in this country is, is absolutely insane. I mean, it's the number one. It's up there as far as, like, top killers in this country. And I, it's, I definitely know it's number one in the military, so it's definitely yeah. up there in overall as well i just want people to open up their arms you know and try to and try to be of service to someone else yeah no and i mean if you if you know you have a problem you think you have a problem you know definitely reach out to somebody to seek help and if you know somebody that could potentially have a problem you know don't stay quiet you know obviously be their support system and get them the help that they need as fast as possible facts it got to be hard though man i want to talk about i want to like i think about the other side of that as well dealing with i know zach it wasn't no, the easiest you. person to live with. I he hear probably you. got on uh, his ex-wife's effing last nerves, you know? So yeah. uh, shout it's out to those individuals as well, right? Yeah, shout it's frustrating to, on their end. Yeah, they, they you know, we, we're sending much patience to you, uh, for sure, if you're dealing with someone in that position. Uh, but like Zach said, where there's uh, where there's breath, there's there's hope. Yeah. Which I've never heard before, but I'm, I'm stealing that from Zach. <laughs> yeah. I love that. But it, I mean, I love what he's doing, man. He's hanging in there in the fight. And I mean, he even gave the example of his buddy that, Chief. you know, drove him crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah, he, yeah. St- he stayed, he <laughs> stayed in the fight with him. And sometimes you just need to last it out with that person so that they can get, get better. You know, so. I think yeah, at I a certain point in time, I think at a certain point in time, it's like he's, I'm oh, sorry, not Keith, but Zach's dad did. You're coming with me. Yeah. Like yeah. it's a, you get so fed up with somebody at a certain point, but you love them so much, you, you're yeah. not taking no for an answer. It's like you're doing yeah. this, period. I love that. It's, it was like it was like a full circle moment. Like his dad grabbed him by the shoulder. Hey, you're coming with me. He did that then, same thing with yeah, Keith. Yeah, he did that same thing. And Absolutely. you know, it's like keep keep it going. You know what I mean? With his yeah. foundation, you know, I love what he did this past weekend. You know, see, with that was the, one of his the challenge favorite. raising all that money. So I see great things coming from him, man. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited to see what he's got next. One hundred percent. Then he's like, no addiction has, like you said, addiction has no boundaries where it can't go. Right. He grew up in a beautiful household. He had, like you said, no issues growing up, no molestation, nothing like that. It was just something that he chose. Right. He chose anyone. He was a people pleaser. This is why I keep telling my mentee, why I tell all the kids, why I tell all adults. uh, I tell you in elementary school, be your own leader. Do what you decide to do. Don't be a follower in that regard because so many of us 
I'll take that. I'll do that. Thinking that we're cool. Uh, when the cool thing to do, quite honestly, is stand up for what you know is right. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Brian, how do you feel? Like, how important do you feel this conversation is in, in our climate today? Talking about uh, not only mental health, but talking about drug addiction, talking about alcoholism, talking about the youth. And Zach was saying that younger and younger and younger kids he's seeing are starting yeah. to become addicted. Like, how important do you feel this work is that we're doing right now that you feel? I, th I think it's super important. I think the more you talk about it, that's that's educating. That's educating yeah. right there. You know, you're 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 giving out the resources. You're talking about experiences that people in those dark holes may be going through right now. So, I mean, he even said it. He's a human being. He answers all his, you know, a lot of the DMs. Well, I said, don't he say gets. he answers all. <laughs> Get too yeah, many. not not all. I'm not, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like he is reaching out and he's actually grabbing and, and getting a hold of people that have problems, and they're actually reaching out to him. So I, obviously, he's doing something really powerful where people that don't even know him personally are coming to him for for advice and help. And I think that's, I think he needs to keep doing what he's doing because, like I said, he's gonna. I mean, down the line, 10 years from now, I mean, think about how many lives he can impact doing what he's doing. Well, this what Zach's doing, having this conversation yeah. is so important because, again, like Zach said, if there's breath, there's hope, right? We don't know who's listening. Yeah. We, the, the, the cool thing, I always talk to, to my mentee and kids about the coolest people to me in high school were not always the one that had to fly his clothes, but the coolest kids to me were the ones that were like, engaging with people, you know, play sports or play something, yeah. but then also cared about their grades, right? It was like a, a dual act. And I think what what we're doing is, you no, know, people don't listen unless it has some form of cool factor to it, right? So us mm -hmm. having a podcast, I think it's pretty cool, but for us to talk about some real hard hitting home topics, someone may be listening like, wow, they had Zach on, Zach is, my idol in this regard. He's very, he's he's engaged to, you know, Tasha. Uh, he's recovered from this. He's keeping it a thousand. He's not lying on anything whatsoever. Not holding back no. at all. That's resonating with someone, right? We're yeah. not we're not going to shy away from anything uh, on talking it out, and we will do just that. Talk it out. Yeah. All it takes is one one thing we say, one some, something that our guest says, something that we say on one podcast that can change somebody's lives yeah. and some of that re resonates with people, right? Cause you yeah. can hear something over and over again, but just the slight way that maybe Zach said something, right? Or the slight way that you, Brian yeah, said it hits something home for someone. them. Yeah. Just it just touches different. It just feels different. Yep.